How's it going folks? I'm just finishing off a pruning job on the Tahitian lime tree behind me here. Uh, I just want to alter the way it's sort of shaped um, to fit in with the new garden design we're planning. So I thought now is the perfect time to do it. We're in winter here in southeast Queensland, subtropical Australia. So I thought I'd get into it now, also feed it up and yeah, just have a bit of a check over the tree and see how she's going. Also going to run through a couple of pests and diseases we've had with this tree and other citrus in the yard. Anyway, I'll get cracking, bring you in and give you a bit of a look at the tree. So this is the Tahitian lime tree. It's sitting in a raised bed, a slightly raised bed made out of corrugated iron. The idea behind that was so we could um, hold compost in there and a bit of wood chip just to fertilize that garden bed. Chickens had other ideas and have spread most of it around the lawn. Uh, in this bed, we also had a kaffir lime up the other end and it died, unfortunately. Presently, we have a load of sweet potato, a couple of yakon, um, rosemary, lavender, there's a bay tree in there, pigeon pea and some taggart's manuda over the back there that have all dried out. That's pretty much well what's in this bed at the moment. So with the redesigning of our backyard, the tin's coming off, some of those plants will be removed, transplanted, cuttings will be taken, we're going to try and set them up in different places in the yard. And with this lime tree, what I'd like to do is a semi espalier uh, or a trellis sort of situation, so we can try and grow it out towards the camera a little bit. Sun comes from that direction there, so that way it'll create a bit of a green wall to collect sun during winter. Now keeping that in mind, I have to be careful when I prune the tree back that I don't open up too much of the canopy and allow the sun, which just <laughs> went behind a cloud, to damage the bark on the tree in the centre. Um, citrus have very sensitive bark and they do tend to get sunburnt easily and that can lead to all sorts of problems, ultimately the death of the tree. Just to show you as well, these are the trimmings. Uh, a lot of the work's already done, I just have to do the fine fiddly work, taking out the gall wasps and cleaning up some of those side branches. Before I run through how I'm pruning the tree back, I'll give you a bit of a look at some of the pests and other issues we've had this, with this tree. Um, that one there is quite obvious, it's a locust, you can see the damage on the leaf. There's actually another one, if I can just bring the camera down, sitting and hiding in that leaf there. Uh, these guys here, it's pretty easy to manage um, when you only have a couple. We just pick them off in the cool of the morning when they're a little bit docile and we feed them to the chooks. That's pretty much well it, as easy as that. Uh, when they do come through in large numbers though, they can really, you know, strip the leaves off your trees. Not so bad on a tree uh, this size, but on young ones it can be quite devastating to the tree itself. So what we have just in here is a gall that's been created when a gall wasp has come and laid her larvae under the fresh spring growth on the plant. Uh, the larvae feed on the tree itself and the tree forms a gall around it. What happens then is the wasp matures, um, burrows out and flies off to repeat the process on another part of the tree or a different tree. I see no evidence of a wasp emerging on this one here so I'm actually going to snip him off and he'll go to one side and end up in the bin out the front. Um, if you do find them though with holes in the galls themselves that pretty much all means that the young has matured, they've burrowed out and they've flown the coop so to speak. If that's the case you can pretty much well leave the galls on there because yeah the damage is already done. What we've got down here are a whole heap of little black aphids. These guys of course you know they suck the sap and the vitality out of your plant and just down here as well feeding off the black aphids we have a yellow shouldered black lady beetle. Um, I'd never really seen them around the patch until I got a message from Tamara on Facebook asking me if I knew what sort of bug it was. I gave her a link to Brisbane Insects, um, a great site by the way for identifying insects if you're in southeast Queensland and she came back and told me that um, hers was a red-shouldered black lady beetle. I went and had a look and yeah apparently this one is a yellow-shouldered one so these guys will polish off aphids, whitefly, mealybugs that sort of thing and they'll also attack the red scale that we get on this plan as well. But what we have down in here these little rusty looking spots on the leaf are actually red scale they're a bit of a pest on uh, a lot of citrus plants. These guys here are a sap sucking insect they pretty much will attach themselves to leaves, branches and fruit as well. They are controllable by using horticultural oils, they pretty much will just smother them and suffocate them. Uh, there are a couple of natural predators out there like lady beetles, the black one in particular, the, the one we've just found on this tree today, they will eat them as well. Like aphids, these guys also excrete a sweet substance which unfortunately feeds another problem you can have with your citrus trees and that's black sooty mildew. Now luckily enough it washes off in heavy rain so it's not a great big problem for your citrus. It will block out some of the um, sunlight so it will be affecting the photosynthesis of the plant a bit I would think. Um, a great way to 
control black sooty mildew is to get rid of these guys scale and aphid off the plants no sweet substance for it to feed on and yeah therefore the the mold pretty much all dies up and disappears another insect pest we've had is citrus leaf miner they're the larvae of a moth that are laid in the leaf and you can see the shiny shimmery little trails they leave as they eat out the leaf from the inside now they're not a really big problem if on a, an established tree as long as you don't have too many uh, but they can be a real problem with some juvenile trees to treat them you can use an oil spray as a preventative um, uh, the other thing you can do is just come along when you see the little trail start just squish them like that uh, they're more of a cosmetic issue on a tree the size of this lime uh, but on the small juvenile plants they can be a bit of an issue so now onto the pruning itself so the first branches to be coming off the tree will be these tall ones here there's a couple uh, in there there's a couple of small ones that are just starting to um, reach for the sky in the center there that I'll nip off and there's a couple over the back here as well they're the first things I'll tackle and then we'll come in a little bit closer and have a look at the other branches I'm nipping off just on this first branch I've nipped off we've got a gall there there's another gall around the back here um, another smaller one on that branch so I'm pretty pleased that you know something like this is coming off it does have a couple of flowers on it still and there's a couple of buds forming but you know I'm not too worried about that This is one of the branches I showed you before that I wanted to lop off. He's a little bit tall. He's got a lime on him. We'll just pull him off now. Pop him down there. Um, I'm not going to cut him back all the way at the, the stem down here. What I'll be doing is taking him off here because there is a small branch coming out here. Now he's coming out laterally, so I'm not too worried about that. With this section here, I've taken off the main tall one, but I'm leaving these small guys here because they will provide a little bit of a canopy to shade out the center. There's a couple over the back here that I'll nip off as well. Just in this section here, I'm taking off any of these branches that are growing out towards the walkway. Um, there's a small little branch there that's growing down that way, so I'll leave him. Um, this one here can go. Pretty much all, all of these, I think, can go. This one here can go as well, but what I might do is I'll just chop him halfway along and hopefully he might send off a little side branch down here oh he can come off so this branch here has a shoot that's coming out into the walkway and it pretty much all comes from the end here it also has a couple of uh, galls on the end so they need to come off anyway back here though you can see where I've pruned it back a couple of years ago the the bark starting to heal over that wound so that's where I've pruned off another branch that was coming out towards the camera in the walkway back here above it though we have a branch that's sort of growing up and then over towards the back of the bed so I'm pretty much all going to leave that one on so I'll make my cut round about here so there you go, hopefully any future branches will grow up and away from here so we don't have to trim him back again. Around the front here there's not really a lot to do um, other than go through and nip off any galls. So there you go folks, uh, it took me a couple of days, I actually um, hurt my sciatic nerve picking up a lime the other day would you believe, so I had to rest Monday, well Bianca made me, but I pretty much all finished the job, uh, most of the tall uh, shoots shooting up are gone, I've left a couple on there but they'll be managed, I've left them mainly just to create a bit of a cover like I said before, just to try and um, shade out this centre trunk, it's alright now in winter but come summer yeah I would like that covered. Over here, just to show you, we've got a load of flowers and we still have some mature fruit on there, a load of more buds that down there. And I just noticed through the viewfinder that we have some chicken food in the tree there, so we might grab him off in a minute. Um, just over here in the centre, um, I've tried to take off anything as you may have seen before coming out into the walkway. I've left a couple of these small ones here and um, they've got a few buds, so we'll hopefully get some fruit. Up here, um, angle cut on all the branches so the water doesn't sit on them and rot. And we've got a couple there that are still going skywards, but like I said, hopefully they'll shade the centre out. Down the front here, we have where the branches will be going out to the espalier. Um, hopefully they'll mature up nicely. I might actually get some stakes in the ground fairly soon, just so we can try and grow them on a certain angle and give them some support. But I'm pretty happy with that. They are hanging a little bit lower than they probably should be. Just down in here, the lavender, hopefully it will start to grow back this way a little bit and take up the position it should have rather than um, overrunning the bay tree and the um, rosemary over on that side there. 
Uh, the branches over here, as you can see, there's still fruit on there that's not quite ready. So I'm pretty much all just letting these branches come out for now. Um, they can be pruned off at a later date. Same down here. There's more buds, so we'll get more fruit from these guys. So they've just got a bit of a reprieve from the time being. I, I would like it to probably be the tree to be about... Um, that thick so eventually those branches there will be coming off and probably like to have it round about oh, what's that probably about a meter and three quarters so yeah just under six foot as I said before it's not going to be that tall so on the winter Sun should be able to come through and hit the grow beds fine and other parts of my messy garden as well so Something you folks with a keen eye would have seen is we have a bit of a nutrient deficiency in this tree here. I don't think it's anything too serious though because these leaves have been like it for months and the new growth, there's no sign that I can see on there of any yellowing of uh, between the veins or, or on the veins so I'm fairly sure it's nothing too serious. I had a look through my own books as well as some online resources and I really can't pick it to tell you the truth what sort of a deficiency it is. I've added on around about 50 or 60 litres of our own homemade compost and I'll also be giving it a good water um, over the next couple of weeks with a kelp based liquid fertilizer it's got 60 nutrients in there and it's fairly high in potassium so hopefully that should do the trick also too I did a chemical pH test the other day and the pH came in around about 6.5 ish so I don't think there's a nutrient lockout going on I think it's just a straight deficiency in the soil so hopefully those amendments I'm going to add will you know correct that come the end of winter I'll probably throw on a couple of handfuls of a chicken based manure um, uh, pellet fertilizer we've got we've got some left over in a drum under the house just throw that around under the tree and hopefully that'll give it a bit of a nitri nitrogen kick coming into spring as well um yeah down the base here i've done a top mulch using lime tree i had a bit of a look around and i couldn't find any reason why i couldn't use the mulched up tree as a um, cover on the ground underneath it the way i figure is the it, the tree's not diseased in any way that i could tell um, these leaves are going to have nutrients in them that the tree will <laughs> need to grow better so yeah i figure i might as well give it back to the tree it's not that thick that it's going to heat up either so there's none of that worry um, and it's also released an awesome lime scent to the backyard one thing I will have to do is to fence it off though so a bit of a fence around there keep the rooster in and to keep the chickens out because they'll just spread this stuff all over the yards these are the limes that came off the tree while I was pruning the majority of these guys will end up being juiced and we'll just freeze the juice in ice cube trays we we'll just pop a brick or two out and put it in the glass with cold water for a refreshing drink and the girls like it warm with hot water and honey there's a bit of a lime and honey drink some will end up in a rum maybe here or there and some will be given away so there you go folks there's a bit of a look at pruning back the lime tree or some would say hacking back um, I'm fairly sure I went over the 30% accepted rule I mean citrus don't even need anywhere near that really they just need to be you know have a bit of the dead wood cleared out um, I'm fairly sure though the tree will bounce back I've seen trees pruned a lot heavier than that and they've bounced back fine um, there's a load of buds on there small fruit and existing large fruit so I'd say if I've stressed the plant too much I will see some of that young fruit and especially the flowers just drop without producing anything so that'll let me know pretty much all straight away I think also too a bit of a look at the pests and the predators they may not be relevant to everyone in the world I mean I know most places get grasshoppers or locusts and aphids uh, and probably even scale not too sure about the citrus leaf miner though but yeah a bit of information might help you out some I will be posting a clip when I do the um, espalia or semi-espalia trellis um, out the side of the tree there and my attempt at grafting on. It hasn't gone too well in the past, but I would like to throw on at least a kaffir lime, a uh, mandarin and a lemon on there just to see how it goes. Um, it's you know probably going to take me over 12 months to get there, but yeah, it's something I will be doing down the line. But I think I'll pretty much well leave it there. Uh, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for coming along and I hope you've enjoyed the clip and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks. Time to get this guy and feed him to the chookies, I think. Looks like Blackie's the lucky girl. He won't last very long.